essence of Hampton University. The Scripps Howard News Watch starts right now. Good evening and welcome to the Scripps Howard News Watch. I'm Carlton Griffin. And I'm Mecca Murphy. Thank you for joining us. On Easter Sunday, Dr. William R. Harvey and former U.S. Ambassador Dr. Michael A. Battle gave memorable tributes to both Hampton University and its founder, General Samuel Chapman Armstrong. Dr. Harvey spoke on General Armstrong's strong belief in good character and how students should carry themselves. The Sunday service was a part of Hampton University's twin anniversary celebration of the university's 150th anniversary and 40 years of leadership from Dr. Harvey. The service included Emmy Award winning gospel musician Ernest Pugh performing with the university's choir. The celebration ended with the university students government association president Martha Bay releasing 40 doves outside of Ogden Hall. Tomorrow is Hampton University's fifth annual day of giving and Hamptonians will stand together for this 24 hour event to give back to the university. The HU day of giving is designed to engage alumni parents, students, faculty, and friends, and a goal to reach over 1,800 donors. Gifts of any size are appreciated, and donors can specify where exactly they want their donation to go, whether it be a particular school department or scholarship account. Donors can participate by giving in person, calling into the 24-hour telethon, or donating online. A celebration will be held at 2 p.m. in the Student Center. Festivities will include a live DJ, student performances, and raffle giveaways. Hampton student election campaigns are in full swing this week. Students from all classifications have been working to secure votes for their run for student government and class officer positions. Tuesday, students went head-to-head -head in debates with their opponents. Voting starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. and polls are open until 5 p.m. in the Student Center Cyber Lounge. Good luck to all the candidates. Nigasi, a word rooted in Ethiopian royalty, is the theme of 2018 Soju Week. This year's Soju Week has been jam-packed with events. Hell's Kitchen was held Monday and allowed clubs and organizations to show off their cooking skills during a cook-off. Students also were invited to an early screening of Truth or Dare on Tuesday at the Virginia Air and Space Museum, thanks to the A. Hampton NBC Universal Group. Tonight, sophomores and juniors will wear their best white and black as they attend the Soju Cabaret at the Marriott in Newport News at 10 p.m. Hampton University President William R. Harvey is announcing a new research facility on campus, the Center for Caribbean Health Research. The center will conduct a research on health disparities in both the United States and the Caribbean to help answer some complex questions to improve health and advance health equity in both regions. The center will be led by a diverse adversary board comprised of experts in public health population health, clinical health, and research. HU is partnering with the University of the Bahamas, St. George's University, and the Pan American Health Organization, and the Caribbean Public Health Agency for this important initiative. Now taking a look at recent Hampton events, Ocean Drive was a week to remember. The campus celebrated Hampton's annual Spring Fest just last week. Ms. Hampton held her fashion show on Tuesday evening that featured multiple local clothing designers, talented models, and even visual elements that kept the crowd engaged. Students also had the opportunity to select one of three DJs to listen to in their separate headsets during the silent party in Holland Hall Thursday evening. The silent party had a great turnout with Hampton alum DJ Envy headlining the event. To end Spring Fest, Hampton also celebrated High School Day on Friday. And WHOV's Lanika Belfield Martin has more. Thanks, guys. High School Day brought out families alum and thousands of aspiring students. I was there to see it all. The university welcomed about 7,500 guests last Friday for the 40th annual High School Day. The program began at 9 a.m. in the Convocation Center, where guests were greeted with exciting cheers and chants by the student recruitment team and volunteers. The rims are spinning in the stereo After, guests were given tours of the campus and dorms by the student recruitment team and volunteers. One volunteer, freshman Lauren Turner, said the event caused her to reflect on her decision to come to Hampton. 
made me just really appreciate making the decision to come to Hampton University because I remember just a year ago I was in that position you know contemplating is this where I want to be is this where I need to be and then once I got here I have made a family. French student Olivia Hensley says the event showcases the best of Hampton. Pride. Even though Hampton's not perfect we do know how to show the best of what we have and we are always continuing to improve to be better and to become that standard of excellence one year at a time and every high school at a time. So yeah. The day ended with a splendid student showcase. If you missed out on high school day, have no fear. Hampton celebrates this joyous occasion every year on the first weekend in April. So mark your calendars, you don't want to miss it. Thanks, Lanika. And now we take a look across the nation. And our first stop takes us to Michigan. Governor Rick Snyder has decided to end the free bottled water program for Flint. Governor Snyder says that the levels of lead in Flint's water are below the federal limit and the quality is well within the standards. Over four years ago, the city of Flint switched its water source to Flint River and large quantities of lead contaminated the water, leaving hundreds of children and adults sick. Many residents believe the water still isn't safe after suffering hair loss and rashes from the tap in the past. Dozens of residents marched on the Capitol to protest the state's decision. Tulsa teachers just walked over 110 miles for their students. For the past week, teachers marched their way to the Capitol to demand more school funding and higher teacher raises. Teachers have, quote, reached a breaking point. Thousands of teachers across Oklahoma are unhappy with the passage of a bill that gave additional funding for education and raises. They are saying it isn't enough. They say much more is needed to replace old textbooks, fund elective courses, and give teachers enough of a raise so they won't have to work multiple jobs. CNN reported that lawmakers say that no money can be added to the state budget, though teachers want $50 million more than has been allotted for next year. The EPA confirmed through emails information that contradicts Pruitt saying he didn't know about the raises. Last week, The Atlantic reported that Pruitt requested two pay raises for his closest aides. EPA spokeswoman says no specific dollar amount for raises is mentioned in the emails, and there's no proof Pruitt knew about them. Pruitt continues to come under fire after reports of excessive spending on travel and ethical issues, including an agreement to rent a $50 a night room in Washington from lobbyists whose firm lobbies for the EPA. This daily drip of accusations of excessive spending and ethical violations serve to further distract the agency from accomplishing its very important mission. I think Congress needs to do some oversight. After all, we don't know the extent of the uh, recommendations made by Mr. Pruitt's security team, but on policy grounds alone, I think Scott Pruitt is the wrong person to head the EPA. President Trump is deciding to respond to the Syrian chemical gas attack within 48 hours on whether to launch a military reprisal in Syria. Trump has continuously stated that the Russian president will pay a price. The Russian foreign ministry insisted there was no evidence of a chemical attack and this could have been a, an operation to lure the Trump administration into a deeper seven-year Syri Syrian civil war. Troops have begun deploying along the Mexican border, answering a call from President Trump to combat. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey announced 225 Guard members from his state, with more than 100 additional troops sent Tuesday. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said about 1,000 troops from his state alone in the coming weeks. Abbott told KTLA in San Antonio, the goal is to have at least 4,000 deployed in a month or two. And a deadly fire breaks out in Manhattan's Trump Tower. The fire in this 58-story building left one man dead and six firefighters injured. Fire Commissioner Daniel Negro tells CNN that the building had no working smoke alarms and were not equipped with fire sprinklers. The New York Fire Department was notified of the fire by a building-wide alarm system, but without any audible alarm, residents were unaware of the blaze. President Trump resides in the penthouse when he's in New York City, but no members of the Trump family were in the tower during the fire. President Trump is continuing to make headlines after the FBI raided the hotel room of his lawyer, Michael D. Cohen. During the raid, FBI agents seized Cohen's business records, emails and documents, along with a payment to a pornographic film actress. During a White House press conference, Trump described the raid as, quote, a total witch hunt. It's a disgraceful situation. It's a total witch hunt. It's a, an attack on our 
country in a true sense. It's a, an attack on what we all stand for. According to an article published by Vox.com, investigators suspect that Cohen was harboring a major spending plan aimed at eliminating problems for Trump's campaign. Tuesday was the second day of Bill Cosby's sexual assault trial. A former Cosby Show actress, Nicole Rochelle, was charged with disorderly conduct after protesting outside of the courthouse where his retrial began. She was arrested after jumping over a barricade topless and the Cosby's accusers written on her body. She did this to symbolize the disempowerment of women's bodies and was released the same day. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport wins the title for the world's busiest airport. With the airport processing at least 104 million passengers, nearly 285,000 travelers daily, according to Forbes.com, this is the airport's 20th consecutive year that they have hosted the most passengers than any other airport in the planet. And Senator of Illinois Tammy Duckworth gave birth to a daughter on Monday, making her the first senator in United States history to give birth while in office. She named her daughter Mel Pearl Bowlesby, and Hawaiian Senator Daniel K. Akaka was able to bless her name for the, family, for the family before his sudden death last week. Duckworth, who is 50, will be taking maternal leave for 12 weeks to tend to her new daughter. She will be back in office after her time off. Stay with us. We have our weather correspondent here in the studio to walk us through next week's weather. And your Bloomberg Business Report is right after the break. Don't miss it. At the time, they told me that I had prostate cancer. I was given only three options of treatment. Prostatectomy, cryotherapy, standard radiation. I said, you've left one out. He said, what's that? I said, proton therapy. Proton therapy eases human misery and saves lives. There was no side effects, none. Ask your oncologist about proton therapy. Live your life. Let us fight your cancer. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Welcome back. Here's today's Bloomberg Business Report. Tech entrepreneur Mark Zuckerberg is under fire as lawmakers are accusing his social network site, Facebook, of failing to protect user data and stop Russian election meddling. Zuckerberg recently faced two days of interrogation on Capitol Hill, where he claimed that his data was exposed in the Cambridge Analytical League. While this situation shines a negative light on Zuckerberg, banks are taking advantage by offering financial advice to customers in exchange for their data. Uber is expanding to two-wheel vehicles. On Monday, the company announced that it has plans to acquire the stationless e-bike startup, Jump. Jump became the first stationless bike service to receive a permit in order to launch its services in San Francisco. Uber has been working with Jump for the last two months on a pilot to combine bike sharing options to the Uber app. While financial terms were not disclosed, TechCrunch reported that Jump was considering an acquisition from Uber for more than $100 million. And the entertainment industry is heating up as two of the world's largest media giants prepare to join forces. The CBS Corporation is currently negotiating a billion dollar merger agreement with Viacom, the parent company of brands such as Nickelodeon and BET. 
the vice chair of both corporations, Sherry Redstones, favors a merger to increase viewerships and co to compete with online media platforms such as Netflix. However, the negotiations could be doomed by CBS chief executive Les Moonves, who does not share the Redstones and visions for the combined company. The epic Marvel superhero film Black Panther is cleaning house in the entertainment industry. On April 7th, the film surpassed Titanic as the third highest grossing film in the history in the U.S. box office. Black Panther now trails behind James Cameron's Avatar and the number one film Star Wars The Force Awakens, Wakanda Forever. The Chinese company since time is responsible for creating the most successful artificial intelligence in the world, which is worth around $600 million. According to the analyst firm CB Insights, the funding led by Alibaba gives since time's automated surveillance a total estimated value of $4.5 billion. Since since time was profited in 2017, it has claimed more than 400 clients and partners. Apple announced Monday that it is releasing new red models of the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. The product red iPhone are identical to the original iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but with a new red finish to donate to help people with HIV and AIDS. The red iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus will be available to order online on Tuesday and will arrive in stores begin shipping this Friday. Prices start at $699. Imagine relaxing comfortably in a hotel room orbiting 200 miles above Earth. Well, in 2022, you'll be able to do just that. On Monday, Orion Span Inc. announced that they plan to open their first luxury hotel in space. The starting cost to stay at Aurora Station will be $9.5 million per person or $792,000 a night. The station will house four guests and two crew. The goal is to allow ordinary, everyday millionaires to feel like real space rangers. The NBA playoffs is finally here, and later in the show, our sports reporter will be here with all your sports news. And today we had a nice warm day. Nico is here to break down our upcoming weather after the break. I had myself examined, and they came to the conclusion that, yes, I did have prostate cancer at the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute. I didn't experience any pain or side effects whatsoever. I feel great. The proton therapy here saved my life. They say there's seven wonders of the world. Well, this is the eighth. <laughs> Live your life. Let the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute fight your cancer. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Listen. I realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Springtime is here, but we're still waiting for these springtime temperatures. Our weather specialist, Nico, is here with more. Well, today's weather has been amazing and beautiful. It warmed up just to the right temperature, which was in the mid-70s, with today's low dropping down to the mid-50s. This weekend's weather will be warm and mostly sunny, so this will be a great weekend to go out and have fun with friends and family. This Friday will be giving us the best day we will see this week with a high in the upper 70s and the low around 60 degrees. What a good way to kick off the weekend. Saturday will be the best day to go out and enjoy the day. Saturday is going to be warmer than Friday with a high of around 80 and the low in the lower 60s. There will be partly cloudy skies all over Saturday. This Sunday is going to be rainy with a 50% chance of scattered showers all throughout the day. The high of the day still up in the mid 40s and the low dropped down into the 60s. 
Next week, Monday will be giving us morning showers with the high in the mid 60s and the low in the 40s. Tuesday will be a lot better than Monday with it being sunny and the high in the low 60s and the low only dropping down into the 50s. Wednesday is going to be giving back the warmer weather we saw this weekend. The high on Wednesday will be rising up into the mid 70s and dropping down into the low cool 50s. This is another good day to go out with your friends and family. Next Thursday is going to drop the high into the mid 60s and the low into the lowers of the mid 40s. It is going to be mostly cloudy throughout that day. So it's pretty, I'm sure you guys are ready to feel the spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm definitely it's ready. Warm yeah, I weather. Almost, I almost walked outside yes. with shorts today on. <laughs> it was pretty warm. Later on in the show, we'll take a look at a kid who has dreams of being the future president. And Harrington is here and your sports news is coming up next. one of the most beautiful university settings you'll find anywhere. From our world-class research centers to our dedication to the arts and our athletic programs where we build champions, we've launched satellites that will better predict the weather. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute Cancer Treatment Center is easing human misery and saving lives. Hampton University faculty, staff, and students are making a difference in the global community through service and science. Sweetheart, Think about your future. Jeff over there did, and just look at him. He saved up, bought a house, he's got a beautiful wife, they even had a fancy pants destination wedding, and oh, oh, they had a baby! Ah! Smart and handsome, ooh, la la. Ah. Now, I've been saving these frames for pictures of my future grandbabies for years, and the shopping sprees on organic clothing and eye telephone cases is not helping you save for a family. Oh, gracious! Look at that! He's a model! <gasps> I bet you he's putting all that money right into a 401k or his baby's college fund. And his teeth are so straight. See how good saving can look at feedthepig.org. Feed the pig. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. Spring sports are in full force here on campus. We'll take a look at outstanding athletes, then we'll dive into the craziness of the NBA playoffs. Let's get started. The Hampton University track and field teams competed this weekend in a, in a, fit, in a pair of meets at the University of South Carolina Gamecock Invitational and the Colonial Relays hosted by William & Mary. The women's 4x100 relay team highlighted the performances of Columbia, South Carolina with a first place finish in, the, in 46. They ran a season best time and are ranked fourth in MIAC. Leading the way was freshman Wesley Cairo, who took second in the 5,000 5, meters in 14 minutes and 25 seconds. His time now is the fastest in the MIAC by almost 32 seconds. The track teams will meet next week next weekend in new jersey in what will be their last meet in the pen relays our hampton men's tennis team dropped another match to george george madison yesterday by a score of zero to seven right now they sit at one and ten and they have another game today in norfolk against and against norfolk state the hampton women's however improved to five and six yesterday following their five and two victory against george mason the Pirates have another game today against Norfolk State, and he looked to improve to 6-6 six six after today's matchup. Our Hampton lacrosse team improved to 3-7 this past Tuesday with a 12-2 win against Audison Broadus University. With the win, Pierce Johnson scored three times, along with Kier Johnson, Jonathan Napier, and Carter Boone, each scoring twice. Darren Williams Store, Melvin Scott III, and Elliot Johnson also got on the board as those three scored one goal. Our Pirates lacrosse team will play next Saturday in Madison, New Jersey against, New Jer against the New Jersey Institute of Technology. UFC superstar Conor McGregor is facing a felony charge after an attack at the Barclays Arena in Brooklyn, New York. Habib Nurgamdov, an undefeated lightweight from Russia, 
co confronted one of Conor McGregor's teammates at the Brooklyn Hotel last weekend. And two days later, McGregor turned up at Barclays Center with a crew of Irish men and attacked a bus that was transporting Nurgamdoff out of the arena. It results in a felony charge, which comes with a dramatic scenery of a New York court appearance. The college basketball season is finally over. Villanova defeated the Michigan Wolverines 79 to 62, making the victory their second national title in three seasons. Player of the year Jalen Brunson finished with only nine points, but the Wildcats squeezed a surprise career high 31 points from Dante DiVincio on the and on the women's side, Notre Dame used buzzer beaters from Arike Ogunwale in the Final Four and National Championship game to capture their first national title since 2001. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish defeated Mississippi, Mississippi State by a score of 61 to 58. Now to the NBA at long last, the tightest, one of the tightest NBA playoff races in recent history has been settled. Here's a look at the NBA playoffs bracket. And in the Eastern Conference, it was all about the fight for the seeding. The Toronto Raptors stayed off a late charge from the Boston Celtics to maintain a grasp of the top spot. While the Philadelphia 76ers used a season closing surge to hold on to the number three spot in the East. And out West, the top two seeds were set for some time, with the Houston Rockets, led by James Harden and the Golden State Warriors, occupying the two spots. However, the, re the remaining six spots remain uncertain until the end. The Denver Nuggets and Minnesota Timberwolves squared off last night in a win and end game. Minnesota defeated Denver in overtime to claim the eighth and final playoff spot. Well, that wraps up sports for this week. Mecca and Carlton, back to you guys. Now, right after the break, we'll take a look at a kid that helps his community at such a young age. Stay with us. So, Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. When I was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer, I thought that was a death sentence. If it was surgery or regular radiation, they didn't tell me anything about proton therapy. Thank goodness I had people uh, around me that said you need to check out the Hampton University proton therapy. I just was delighted to have proton therapy. I feel great. I had no side effects and I didn't miss a day of work. We're very fortunate to have a facility like this here in Hampton. Live your life. Let the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute fight your cancer. To end the show, we would like to shine a light on a special kid who has a bright future. States of America. But in the meantime, four-year-old Austin P. Ryan says he likes to do more in his free time to get him there, other than play and eat candy. Because I wanted to show love for the homeless. Little Austin says his motto is show love. This now viral video his dad made showed him showing love by feeding the homeless. It makes me feel great. Austin's dad, Terrence P. Ryan, tells me this idea sparked after watching Animal Planet on TV. Austin asked his dad why the mother panda left her cubs alone. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I guess it's going to be homeless for a while. And he says, are people homeless? I says, yes, yeah, some of them. And he asked me to take him to see a homeless person. They did just that. This father and son bought food for the homeless in Pritchard. That experience launched a passion project for the four-year-old who helps the hungry whenever he goes. In Birmingham, Washington, D.C., even in the middle of our interview. I have an idea. We should go feed the homeless right now. So that's exactly what he did. Austin took us with him as he went out the door to show us what it's like when he's out giving back. I would say to feed everybody else that's a homeless. I just want... Austin's experience to be contagious to everyone else. Even though people are different, they still deserve to be loved. God bless you, dear. That was such a feel-good story. I really hope that kid goes on to do Definitely. some amazing things in life. Definitely. Well, that's it for our Scripps Howard News Watch. I'm Carlton Griffin. And I'm Mecca Murphy. Have a great week.